Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the show. And as you can tell, today we have a very special guest indeed. We have Sandy Johnson. Sandy, how are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you giving up your time to come and talk to us today. Of course, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Naturally, and I'm sure uh, you, you get this quite a lot, of course, we, we have to talk about the iconic Halloween, 1978, the original, um, but also uh, we'd also like to get to know you a bit more about your personal life um, and how you kind of started into acting uh, and kind of what you're up to these days. Okay. Um, so if we could start with how did you first fall into acting? I was very interested in drama when I was in middle school and through high school and then into college. So I did a lot of things through school. And then um, I got to where I was taking lessons, that, like the studios would have improv groups and different things. So I took a lot of lessons that way, a lot of improv things. And I didn't really get serious about it, though, until my dad was very sick and I needed to earn some money. So uh, that's when I did Playboy. And then after I did Playboy, I started getting a lot of offers for films. I'm so sorry to hear that about your father. Um, Thank you. you know, but I think it's, I, I, I remember before, I've seen before that you spoke about it. And I think it's, it's an incredible thing for you to, as you said, to, to make some money for, for your father. So that's, you know, that's, that's a, that's a, a beautiful thing um Thanks. so was was halloween one of the first sort of offers you had for a role or was there a different way on how you stepped into the movies i was with playboy agency and there were uh, there was um jokes my folks never told me i think was one of the first ones and then Halloween and Hots were real close together. So those were, um, and then uh, Gas Pump Girls, Halloween Hots. Yeah, those were all real close together. Amazing. So so did you have to, uh, was the role of Judith uh, a role that was kind of offered to you or was there like an audition process or how did that kind of work out? It was an, it was an audition process. I was uh, received a call from my agent who said that I needed to go and be interviewed for a film at the time called The Babysitter Murders. And so I did, and I went and I interviewed for that. And then the next day or so, I got a call from my agent and said that I had been uh, cast as Judith Myers. Uh, did you at all, um, was it sort of as you read the script or as the movie kind of progressed that you discovered how like iconic and big that Judith Myers actually was in the movie? Actually, I wasn't given the whole script to, re to read. You know, they keep scripts kind of undercover until they're ready. So I was just given the sides that included uh, a couple of the girls' different parts of lines. And so that's, I really didn't know the whole story. I didn't know that Michael was going to grow up to be a, a serial killer or any of that stuff. So it wasn't until I actually went to the premiere and saw the full movie that I went, oh my God, this movie is really scary. You know, with, uh, with the scenes that you're in in the movie, um, something I was really kind of interested was how it was shot from the sort of the viewer's perspective. So obviously we see kind of, we're looking through Michael's eyes and we see the hands coming to stab uh, Judith uh, but from your perspective how was that all kind of shot? Well it was kind of interesting because normally you know there's just a you know one camera just kind of sitting there and it's just following you around but of course in this one the camera goes by the window and then it disappears and then you can hear it coming through the kitchen and the, the drawer opening and all that stuff. And then you don't see it. And then as you're 
on the couch, you know, it's in one corner and then it starts to follow you. So it's really kind of creepy because it's, it's like a stalker in itself. And then it follows you up the stairs and into the bedroom and all of that. And then, and then of course it starts coming at you with, um, Deborah Hill holding a knife in front of her. So it's kind of not just one cameraman, but kind of a four or five people coming at you and the one in the front has a knife. So it was a little different than your normal scene because that was such a new type of filming that it wasn't something that I was real familiar with. So it, it was different for sure. Absolutely. And and I, I think as well with, with that scene, I think how it was shot really really is what's captivated about that scene um, because you kind of feel like you're like from the viewer's perspective really invested in 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 the role um, so with your whole scenes uh, even from in the living room and then sort of moving up to the stairs was that very strict with how things were uh, to be portrayed or was it a little bit more free flowing to be able to play with it was, it was, yeah, there was some freedom there. I mean, they had demonstrated more or less what they wanted downstairs. They wanted kind of a, a fun, flirty kind of feel to it. And then, of course, upstairs was more, um, I was just kind of into myself and brushing my hair and that kind of thing. And then, of course, the murder scene. So, they were, I mean, they were careful with the fall. They were pretty particular about how they wanted that because they didn't want me to get hurt. So we did practice that. But as far as the other stuff, there was there was uh, some play there. Oh, brilliant. Um, so whilst you were on set and, and whether it's in your scene or, or maybe behind the scenes, um, what was it kind of like on the set of Halloween? And, and do you have any kind of moments that stick in, out in your head the most? It was very busy because it was low budget. So everybody was doing multiple jobs. Everybody had a job. So nobody was just sitting around. So it was very busy and we were trying to get it all ready before it got dark. So that part was busy. We were very busy, you know, doing practice shoots and going through the shots over and over and all of that. Although we only did two takes. So we did a lot of, of practice wow. and, um, I remember it was fun. It was it, the scene downstairs was a lot of fun and playful. It was um, creepy uh, going up the stairs, and that part was was creepy for sure. The the people were all nice. Uh, everybody on the team was nice, so it was busy. They were still kind of doing the last minute touches on the house itself to make it look new because it started out very dilapidated. So they oh. were working on that. I remember that the, the blood pellets were, um, you have to get them off pretty quickly and between scenes. And so I remember that Jamie Lee came in and helped with that because whoever was doing it was for was a little rough. And so <laughs> she said, maybe I can help her with that. So she helped uh, get the, the, you know, the blood off of me and everything so we could shoot it again. So that was kind of fun. Um, so what was your, uh, or, or even if you did, did you have uh, many encounters or much of a relationship with uh, members such as Jamie Lee or John Carpenter or Donald Pleasance? I didn't. I never got to meet Donald Pleasance. We weren't, he wasn't in my scene or on, mm. you know, on set when I was shooting there. But in fact, I never really saw any of them again because I moved away. Oregon after that and didn't actually see any of them until I went to the premiere of 2018 Halloween 2018 so at the oh. premiere I got to see everybody again which was just really fun it had been 40 years so that was uh, like the 40 year anniversary so yeah it was it was a lot of fun seeing everybody again we went over to the to the big party that they have had after the premiere so I got to visit with everybody again and as well as the new cast members from 2018 so it was a lot of fun. Um, did you ever keep up to date with any of the Halloweens between the original and well, even to the new one now? Uh, I really didn't until my agent found me in 2018 
Uh, I was a teacher for like 20 years, did ran my own businesses. I mean, I was so busy with other stuff that I very seldom got to read or watch anything. So I really didn't get to catch up with all that until I, until the agent found me. And then they called me from Blumhouse to see if I wanted to allow them to use my scene in 2018. And when I said yes, well, then of course they said, you know, the premiere and all of that. So then I started watching them <laughs> to see what all had gone on because I really had no idea it was such a big franchise. Yeah, that's that's something I was, I was going to ask, uh, you know. Um, so when the release of Halloween 1978 first came out, was there any part of you that ever thought the possibility of it growing to arguably one of the most iconic uh, movies of all time did you ever think that that was a possibility I really didn't in the 70s horror films weren't really especially low budget horror films weren't really something that made it big so I, I wasn't necessarily expecting that of course today as we look back those are the films that we love and we cherish they're all our favorites but back then it really it really wasn't that way most of the ones that we really like Frankenstein and Dracula and all of those they were all big budget films so the idea that a small budget horror film was going to become a big iconic film really <laughs> didn't cross my mind absolutely and I, I always thought I would, I would love to have seen uh, like, like you said I, I know you said that sort of between the movie and and in 2018 you were kind of out of the loop with the franchise and I would love to have seen, seen your reaction when you sort of first discovered how big it actually has become. Yeah, it was uh, it was actually an incredible night when I got the the text message from the from the man Rick, uh, Rick and Reek, who would later become my agent. When he texted me and asked if I was Sandy Johnson from Halloween, it was like, what? I mean, it was such a random thing to pop on my phone. I, something I hadn't thought about in forty years. And then when he started telling me, well, you know, it's a really big movie. It's a it's huge franchise. People know your name all over the world. And I'm just sitting there, who is this guy? I mean, I really had no idea about any of this. So when I finally got off the phone with him, I did something that I never really do or did was Google my name. And <laughs> there it was. All right, look at that. Uh, it was amazing. There were all these websites. Where is Sandy Johnson? What happened to Judith Myers? And it was like, I got no sleep at all. It was just, it was like a whole new world opened up. It was crazy. So yeah, that's what it was like. Uh, I was going to say, because I know, you know, it's not even just like, it's not even just like you're a part of the franchise. Like you played Judith Myers, like the very first kill in Halloween, the sister of Michael Myers, and I always remember, you know, sort of in the early 2010s to, well, 2018, I always remember at the horror conventions or any conventions, every single year there was always requests to get Judith Myers from Halloween to come to the conventions. Um, so were you ever kind of aware about these conventions? Nope. <laughs> I had no idea. I knew about teachers conventions. That's what I knew about. Um, so when, another, when a was whole your, other world to learn about. When was your, um, your first convention that you attended? It was within a week of the premiere of 2018. It was in Pasadena, the 40th anniversary of uh, Halloween, Halloween 40, I think they called it. And uh, I think it was associated to Horror Hound. It was massive convention. So it, I, I was uh, dunked underwater the, <laughs> the first one before I even learned to swim. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's quite, a, um, quite an intense way to kind of break into the scene because, um, you know, as although I'm, I'm sort of attending as as a fan of these conventions you know even as I can kind of get overwhelmed being there so I can't even imagine what it must have been like for you with with all the cues for the autographs and the photos um what is your 
what's the general experience for you that's been at the conventions and been with the fans? It has been amazing. I mean, that's the word I could just think about. I have met the nicest people ever in my whole life, the nicest people I have met, other than my very few great friends. Um, they, have, they have been welcoming, they have been fun, entertaining, creative, warm, loving. I mean, all of those things, that's what they've been for me. And um, I'm so glad that several of them kept saying, you should do Facebook or Instagram or something to keep in touch with people. And that was such a great idea because obviously there's limited fans. There's a lot of competition to be at them. So you don't always get to be at the ones you want. So now at least I can keep up with them whenever I have a chance. And, and it, it's been amazing. I've got to know their, them and their families and their cats and <laughs> all this stuff, their babies uh, uh, through internet. So that's been really fun. So yeah, yeah. it's been <laughs> I was going to say about your, your social medias, especially Facebook. Um, you know, it's one of the coolest pages ever. I love the fact that you kind of uh, sort of dress back as, as um, Judith did back in 1978 and, and the, the pictures you take are so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so if we kind of go back to uh, before Halloween 1978, um, were you ever a fan of horror movies in general? I was a fan. It was something that my girlfriends and I would do on the weekends at somebody's house. We would go over and rent uh, The Exorcist or, uh, you know, just all the great ones that were popular back then. And we would, Psycho in particular, I remember that weekend, and we would just all huddle down and, and scare ourselves to death. And then we would usually do a seance or something, you know, to finish it off. <laughs> girl stuff so yeah we loved horror films amazing so so when you sort of first got into acting then was it um was going into a horror movie kind of uh, a goal for you or was it just however it kind of played out it was just kind of how it played out my first films were actually comedies so that is actually where I started and then Halloween obviously took a bit of a turn so uh, I just like to act. I have several films coming up that are horror films, but there's one that's a Western and I'm particularly excited about it because I'm a Texan. So it's pretty cool to be cast in a Western. Yeah, I was going to say, so is there, so I've seen on your IMDb, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe there's four, four movies coming out. I think that's right. There's, there's, there's some that are just kind of floating out there, but if I don't count those, there's UK, Florida, California, Texas. So yeah, there's four that I haven't shot yet. And there's two more that I've already shot. So that one is Volps, The Less for Revenge. That one's Hungarian. And wow. then Halloween Slasher, uh, obviously. <laughs> That's not a Western. <laughs> I've I've shot both of those already. They were they were virtual shoots because of COVID. Absolutely. So how how's life been for you um, during uh, the pandemic? Like how have you kind of coped with it? Well, I guess I've always been. I got this from my mother. She was a positive thinker, and she felt that if you felt positive things, you could keep a lot a lot of negative things away from you. So. I have stayed pretty positive through most of it. I haven't been um, ridiculously careless, but I have not locked myself in the house and been afraid to go anywhere for sure. I have traveled. I've been to UK. I've been to California. Um, I have gone shopping. I've done all the things that many people are still afraid to do, and I've been fine. I'm just careful, um, you know, with what I touch and you know, wear a mask when I feel like I'm really close to a lot of people or something. So, you know, in the beginning, it was kind of scary because it was kind of unknown and there wasn't a vaccine, but I don't know. I, I, I guess it helps too that I live in Texas because we tend to be <laughs> a bit rebellious. And so most of the mandates and all of those things didn't stick well. 
So it wasn't long before everything opened up again. And, and of course, they required you to be careful. And they did space you out in restaurants and stuff. But it's been back to normal now with normal seating for at least a year. So and oh. it's it's good. That's that's great. You know, I think, um, you know, touch wood, we're kind of slowly coming out the other side of it now. But I think it's it's really good to, to be able to kind of share a message that people like yourselves are you know portraying a positive message because it's been tough for a lot of people and and i think it's 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 great to hear that it's been it's been positive for you so uh thank you for that you're welcome um in regards to uh conventions or, or in general just uh so uh, how do i word this uh experiences with fans so when it comes to a an autograph or a photo uh, do you have any kind of moments that really stick out in your head the most or any experiences that you think you'll always remember? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have one and, and they're now really good friends of ours, but it was kind of funny. There are those fanboy moments and I had a fan come up to me. I think it was in New Jersey and he started to say something else. And then all of a sudden he just popped out and said, here's the first boobs I ever saw. <laughs> and my husband said, hey, me too. <laughs> so, and then of course he flushed on and he said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I really <laughs> don't know what I was going to say. So he went away. He was so embarrassed. And then he came back later with his wife and, and um, he proceeded to pursue as, proceed as it should have the first time and got autograph and photo and all that. So now we are friends on social media. And when we did, we did a shoot at Myers House, North Carolina last year, I think, or the year before. And his daughter, uh, Paige, was the young Michael for me. So they drove out from Virginia, the, the family did. And it was great to see them. So, and and the daughter actually adores my husband. So <laughs> she likes me, but she adores him. So it's kind of funny. So that was one uh, fan event that was had a story to go with it. And uh, and then I have a, a young one that was just a baby, and and uh, his name is Matthew, and I refer to him as my youngest fan because he came up in his stroller and he was very little and his mother said that he loved to watch Halloween he for something on the stage something on the picture <laughs> he liked to watch it so he's always been in my mind my youngest fan so um let's see and then of course there's so many that um there's a Maggie and a Pam that are just great friends now I just I just have lots of great friends on there that have started as an encounter at a con. That's that's amazing to hear. You know, I think, I think that's you know these these conventions. I think it's, I, I kind of feel when people first come into a horror convention or horror fans, there's kind of this like, well, what are they going to be like? Like, because there's this, you know, they're a fan of quite, in some cases, quite violent movies. Um, but you know, every time I speak to uh, people like yourself who who have attended uh, these conventions and obviously iconic characters in these movies. Um, there's always kind of a positive message. So that's, that's amazing that you've had, had great experiences. Yeah, it has been. I didn't know what to expect the first one I went to. It uh, wasn't something I'd ever really seen or I, so I, I had no mental picture of it at all. So I really didn't know what it was gonna be like. You're, you're right, I mean, the people coming there Many of them are huge fans of really terribly <laughs> violent films. And, you know, what are these people like that are attracted to this? So I was, I was pleasantly surprised that uh, they were wonderful, sweet people and uh, weren't anything like you might think that they would be. They were, they were awesome. I love them. Amazing. Um, do you have any, uh, maybe this year, or presumably this year, um, are there any kind of conventions or any events you're going to be attending that's kind of confirmed yet? Uh, I have confirmed that I'm going to be at Texas Haunts, which is a convention for people who are into haunted houses and such. I was there last year 
and uh, I had a good time. It's not a huge convention, but it, it's a Texas convention, and I like to support Texas conventions. Um, but I, I will be there again because I can drive and, and just hang out. I know some other people that are going. I am there. I'm being considered for four or five others. We haven't heard for sure yet, so my fingers are crossed because I will be very sad <laughs> if I don't go to at least several this year because I miss the fans. So I'm hoping that uh, some of them will come through and decide to invite me. Absolutely. And we'll keep an eye out on that. So if you ever get announced for a convention, of course, we'll, we'll spread the post. And I really hope you're coming back to the UK soon. I'd really love to meet you. Thank you. I hope so, too. And I have uh, one film that I'm hoping will get funded so I can come back to shoot that because I think it'll be a good one. That one is uh, Creeps at the Gym. So um, oh, okay, hoping yeah. that that would be amazing. Yeah, Sandy, it's on. Thank you so, so much for taking up your time today to come and speak to us. Um, it, to me, it truly is. It's, it's insane to think that yourself, Judith Myers, has come, come on to the show. So I, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Listen, I'd like to um, let your fan, our fans know that um, they can also go to my website if they can't go to cons and things to meet me. They can go to my website and they can they can get autographed photos. They can get videos of me signing things for them. They can send me things to, to sign. So there's a lot and there's tons of podcasts and yours will be added at some point. So they can learn about what's what's going on in my life or has happened. So it's um, unicornsandyj.com. So unicornsandyj.com. Fantastic. What I'll do is uh, in the top of the description, I'll link your website and I'll also link your social medias because I feel like people have to follow your social medias. It's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, perfect. Good. Sincerely, thank you so much. It, it, it really means a lot to have you, have you on the show and for giving up your time. You're so welcome. And I, I hope things are better over there with COVID and all that and things are getting back to normal for you.